go guys bailing up the stuff I uh, mowed the other day with that new idea cut conditioner the bales are adding up so our corn crop this year I chopped five more loads than I chopped last year last year I chopped 13 acres this year I chopped 17 but I'm getting all these bales off the same acres kind of crazy I guess uh, instead of getting the extra grain of my corn corn and corn silage I'm getting bales for the cows to lay on and pick through this winter but it is what it is to get this bale off get these bales moved off before the rain gets here in a couple hours and then we'll be ready to cover this with manure and then uh, no-till in our winter eye so in the winter eye we will uh, hoping to bale it next year at least some of it probably chop half of it and bale half of it we're gonna try uh, try something that was mentioned to me by a viewer he said uh, I should use that new idea cut conditioner condition my windrows after I cut my rye in the spring. So I think that's what we're going to try. I think we're going to cut our rye one day, then the next day we'll come back with that cut conditioner, go over the windrows, that'll uh, condition it basically because it'll be like putting it through a flail hay bind or disc bind, and then it'll fluff the windrows back up, and then Probably the following day we'll tet it out. Hopefully the day after that we can round bale it. It's dry hay. But we're gonna We're gonna try it and see how it works. See if we can get it dry enough to bale for dry hay. I don't wanna make baleage because I've got a chopper. Kinda of foolish to spend that money on wrapping bales when I've got a perfectly good chopper that'll chop it um, but this morning of course I'm chopping every day to feed the cows get in there get a wad. might have to go on and block that one or maybe not I had a new Holland I had a girl so I went down and ordered the materials for that lean-to on the shed so I can fix that because they're talking rain for like the next four or five days. So on days that it's not raining too bad, I'll uh, work on that roof and get that done. And then after I get the manure hauled on here and the rye planted, I need to get that chopper box that's sitting right there up to the shop so we can get that hoist mounted underneath it, build the hinges. Get that ready to rock and roll. So I'll have that wagon available for picking cob corn. And so yeah, that's what's going on around here. I have to uh, work on the cows under that shed too and replace those crappy boards. And I might add 36 feet to the back side, I'm not for sure yet, but still would like to build a new shed next year, so I don't know if I want to add on to that for the cows or just build a windbreak for them. I might, uh, might build some calf shelters like uh, Anderson Cattle Company up there in Alberta for the calves to go in and not worry as much about the cows. So, supposedly I've got a bale, all the corn stalks, or all the corn acres for a buddy of mine. And I think I'm gonna take corn stalks on trade for payment. So we have plenty of bedding for our cows this winter because who knows what's gonna happen. 
Some say it's going to be mild and some say it's going to be terrible, so we're going to prepare for terrible. But, try and figure out where we're going to what we're going to do with the cows for next year. But, I had a comment on my last video about not being very productive or in anything that I'm doing or something. I guess I don't quite understand what that comment was. <clears throat> but, apparently it's somebody that doesn't watch all my videos. Because if they did, they probably have an idea of what's going on and why I'm not spending money on anything else right now. I have not mentioned what is going on or what is in the making, but most guys can probably kind of figure it out. Can't can't spend money on equipment or buildings right now because something more important is happening. Actually, a couple things more important are happening right now. And one thing that's happening right now that the opportunity doesn't come along very often for this. So I have to be prepared for that when the day comes. And when I know that this person is actually getting paperwork done, <clears throat> I know that it's going to happen sooner than later. So that's kind of put a hold on a lot of things, including buying another tractor right now. <clears throat> but it is what it is. It's going to be fun. I'm not going to have quite, quite enough hay in this, or material in this row to probably make enough to tie the next bale. But, there was about four, four and a half acres in this part of the cornfield that we shredded. The other stuff was mowed with the hay by and that's so we made the video of chopping with the 3950. Four rows of corn at a time. And there was about three acres on the other side of the waterway that I just bailed. And we have 25 bales on the counter. So, about two and a half bales per acre. Uh, I would have rather had better corn, but it is what it is. So, anyhow, we're done bailing this. I have, on the other side of the road, on my other piece of ground over there, the corn over there was pretty thin and really, really thick grass. I shredded the rest of that, but those, there's way too much there, and I was going to get rained on, so it's going to be even longer before I get it bailed. So, hopefully after this rain, we can get it tetted out, get it dry for bedding too round bale that for bedding but anyhow yeah rain every other day is kind of becoming kind of becoming the norm apparently but anyways so we chopped corn silage off this now we bailed it for bedding oh boy pretty crazy pretty crazy this year is but next year next year we know the chemicals that I was sold are pre-emerge, not post-emerge. So, the company that I bought the chemicals from, they also got an education on that. So, next year we will spray our pre's with our Roundup at planting and hopefully we will not have this issue again. But if we do, we've got the cultivator there and I guess we'll cultivate corn if we absolutely have to. Or there are some other chemicals we can use too, but the problem is a lot of the chemicals that we've been researching will hinder our planting the rye following corn. So I'm kind of don't really want to plant or spray anything else that, that late. So we'll see what happens. Anyways, making the best of a bad situation, I guess. Cows can eat it or they can lay on it. Let's tell you what, it'll make a better turd than a snowball will. <laughs> 